G'day fellas. Um, so if you've got a MIG welder and it's not doing the right thing and it's playing up, I thought I'd uh, make a quick video on showing you basically how to troubleshoot and repair your welder. Uh, behind me I've got a Unimig uh, MIG welder 180. Um, it's pretty common. It doesn't have to be this brand. The troubleshooting will basically be the same. I'll just flip the camera around now and I'll show you what to look for. So um, it's important to understand the basic anatomy of the MIG welder if you want to troubleshoot what's going on. So with this machine, your spool of wire sits on here. Um, the spool itself uh, is just free spooling. Um, it's being pulled through the actual gun, down to the gun, uh, using a 24 volt motor normally, uh, which um, basically your, your wire goes through here and then this wheel clamps down on it just to give it positive pressure and then the motor is spinning this way and it pushes the wire through when you press the gun. Um, this is the back of the connector for the gun so your gun has to handle, has a switch which is these two and um, then it's got the main wire and it's got gas. That That's the three things that it has to do. It has to let the wire go through, have gas, and then have a switch so that when you pull that trigger, the wire comes out. Um, so if you, you've got a problem where you're pulling the trigger and you've got no wire coming through, even though it's running through here and you've played around with the, um, the pressure, and it, you want to have a look and see if this is spinning. If this isn't spinning, then your motor for the uh, wire feed is probably not working. The motor is located, I'm just going to use a tire gauge here so you can see. Um, so this here is the 24 volt motor. Uh, maybe if I give a top view, sorry about the camera. Uh, it's not going to work like that. But the motor's in here, it's basically on the back of that wheel. Um, and you'll see it has two wires going to it. Um, it has a wire here and a wire down here, that's the earth. You can tell by the color, so the red one is positive because it's a DC motor, and the other side's negative. What you're gonna to wanna to do is get uh, two car batteries and get some uh, little probes, and with the machine turned off, just put your earth on here and the positive side up here on the other terminal. If you provide 24 volts to that motor and it doesn't spin, that stuffed. Uh, okay, the second thing that could be wrong is when you pull on the trigger on the gun, you've got wire feed, but you've got no gas coming through. The first and uh, simplest thing to check is that your gas bottle has got gas in it. So when it's turned on, your gas should be reading up near here. Uh, as it progresses down, your gas bottle is starting to empty. So when it gets down, mine gets down to about here. That's almost done. Um, and you want to make sure that the gas bottle is actually turned on. So normal anti-clockwise to turn it on, clockwise to turn it off. What you're going to do also is trace this gas line back to the machine. So this um, gas line comes in through here, and this is the solenoid for the gas. Uh, you'll see it's got um, it's a DC solenoid, and it's got two wires going into it. If that solenoid receives power, it's supposed to open up this valve to let the gas pass through to the MIG handle. So what you're going to do is uh, same thing as with the wire feed motor. Uh, you want to put some power into this and you should hear it click and then the gas should pass through. If that isn't clicking open to let the gas through, then that is stuffed and that's the part that you need to fix. Okay, so let's say uh, you've got the power cord plugged in and the machine just won't turn on. So you're, you're flicking that and you're getting nothing. Um, this isn't too hard either. Um, you want to take a look on the motor side and electrical side of the box. And you'll see, uh, so basically we've got AC power coming in. So depending on if you're... Like we're in Australia, so it's 240 volt AC. America, I think it's 120 AC. It doesn't matter. It's just the AC has to pass through the switch. So on the bottom side here, you've got your AC connections. And then um, 
you've got a whole heap of piggybacked um, connectors on the top which um, once the switch allows well once the switch turns on it's supposed to allow power through to all your connectors here which all go off and do various things um, one of the things the power is allowed to do is go down to the circuit board which is here <coughs> pardon me what you're going to want to do um, first of all dust is the enemy so if you've got heaps of dust like this one um, you're going to want to get a air compressor or uh, maybe a can of compressed air or whatever you have access to and you're going to want to blow off all this dust um, electrical components if the dust builds up um, it can cause a problem the second thing you want to do is pretty basic um, you just want to have eyeball the the um, little circuit board here so you've got a series of capacitors um, you see how the capacitors have been crimped in this formation um, a blown capacitor all of this will be flayed open and there'll be like what looks like um, fiber like a very thin fiber I'll put a picture up now of what a blown capacitor looks like if you can spot a blown capacitor on the board uh, then you're going to have to if you want to do it yourself you're going to have to remove this board desolder the capacitor and just go buy that component they're very cheap um, if it is that that's wrong and you can and you can find a capacitor replacement which will only be a couple of bucks um, it'll be a really cheap fix because um, if you take it to somebody they're going to swap the whole board out and probably charge you an arm and a leg to do it and often it's just cheaper to buy a new welder the other thing is uh, down here you've got resistors so um, if any of the resistors are blown I'll uh, put a picture up now of what a blown resistor looks like um, if any of these resistors are blown then same thing you're going to have to take the board out use a soldering iron and uh, desolder the uh, affected resistor and uh, the good thing is resistors are color coded so you can pretty much there's websites where you can uh, I'll put one in the description where you can uh, punch in the color coding of the resistor and it um, will show you uh, how many ohms the resistor is and then you'll be able to find the replacement one that you need um, you'll notice there is also a fuse uh, which is hidden in here let me take the fuse out which um, the cover is just removable by hand or a set of long nose pliers we'll see how hard this one is to get out shouldn't be too bad so the um, that's the cover for it so it's just a glass fuse <clears throat> Uh, what you're going to want to do is pull that fuse out, just use a pair of long nose pliers, pull it out, and if the wire inside the fuse is has got a gap in it or has um, got some signs of charring, like some black um, blackness to the inside of the glass, um, then you're going to want to change that. That's a cheap fix as well, so you just buy a new fuse, and um, you just have a look on the fuse. I'll pull the fuse out now. Okay, so pulled that out. Um, now you'll see on it there's some writing engraved onto it. So this one is a 250 volt, uh, 6.3 amp. So you can get them at your electrical retailer, Repco. Um, yeah, it just depends what you've got available to you shop wise. But um, oh, the other thing you can do is run this through a um, continuity tester so if you've got a um, if you've got a multimeter it'll have a mode on it that'll, that allows you to check continuity and um, basically you put the positive on one side negative on one side and if this is good it will make a beeping sound if you connect the uh, negative and positive to this fuse it doesn't matter which way around you do it um, and it doesn't make that beeping sound then the fuse even though it looks good is stuffed so hopefully you can just replace that one that isn't the problem with this machine um, <coughs> the part of me the this machine um, is I pull the trigger it's got gas it's got wire feed but it does not arc it does not have power so um, what I'm looking for 
is the up here at the power delivery side of things. So um, you've got the transformer here and you've got some fat cables that pass through this wall to the other side. Um, one of the most common things is these nuts go loose. So just check that they're tight. They're tight on this side. Look for discoloration or melting on the cable, uh, particularly right near the crimp. Um, there's a little bit of discoloration on this one and you can see it's a little loose. Sorry, maybe you can't see because the camera's that bad or I'm that bad. Um, but there is some movement there. So if you've got movement, that means it hasn't got 100% contact to the bolt passing through the wall. So that needs to be tightened. Uh, now I'll just look on the other side. So you can immediately see <coughs> what the problem is. <clears throat> uh, so this is earth. So that's, that's loose. And also this top bit here is actually melted. So let's see if I can get this off. It's pretty tight. So um, it looks like someone's tried to get this off failed because I've snapped it and um, so this terminal is loose as well obviously if you've got a loose a loose terminal with not enough conductivity because this this um, connection here goes down and goes out to the gun so if there's uh, not enough uh, conductivity on that pole uh, then it's going to cause resistance and resistance equals heat which is what looks like it's happened here. As you can see also, the terminal doesn't look too bad but there's um, some melting or discoloration at the base of it. Um, so that's not going to be the end of the world. I'll just run a uh, wire brush over that. But let's have a look at this. You can see this washer which is supposed to be nice and shiny like the one on the bottom is all um, is uh, well, look at it. It's just covered in crap. So we'll replace this washer. I'll probably pull this bolt out as well and shine that up. Uh, so I've grinded the the wrecked um, thread off the existing um, double-ended stud, and I just welded another bolt onto it, quite crudely with my other um, arc welder. But it's going to do the job. I was a little bit. Um, I wanted to make sure the thread stays the same, um, so I made sure that uh, the new wing nut matches the old wing nut and that the new bolt has the same thread as well, just to make it easy for like swapping polarity and getting the um, wing nuts around the wrong way. It'll still work sort of thing. But anyway, so I've got some washers, ones that aren't rusted as badly as the as before, and um, I'm just going to put it all back together and then see if this thing fires up um, I don't think it had a spring washer on it before which it should have um, but anyway I'm gonna put one on there and I got a new wing nut that isn't broken the only uh, regret about this is that I too impatient to order a new um, bulkhead there because I mean it's, it's melted but it's not going to affect the functionality um, because now that side's nice and solid I cleaned that terminal up with a stainless steel brush and the other side um, is nice and tidy too um, so yeah so I'll put it all back together and um, run this wire through that I've just put in. Oh, that's sweet. So I've definitely got art back. It, um, it doesn't sound right. At the moment, it sounds overpowered. Perhaps um, before when I was cranking it right up, maybe it was to make up for the fact that there wasn't a good contact in there, but um, 
Um, yep. That bacon crackle happening. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of going through systematically. Um, check the basics. If it's gas, check your gas bottle's full. Check the connections are good. Put your hand over the end of your MIG to make sure um, you got pressure. Uh, if it's Wi Fi, just check that the motor's turning. Put 24 volts through the motor. Just double check your voltage, not all welders have 24 volt um, feed motors, but some of them do. Um, and just check that that's turning. And then of course, quite a common one is one with power, so you really got to check, um, just check you haven't blown the circuit breaker on the, the GPO that you're using. Check that you've got power on your extension cord. Um, then move along and check the machine fuse, and then uh, check for any blown capacitors. Uh, resistors and of course um, any loose terminal connections like what we found um, the one leading to the gun was all all stuffed and if they're loose you're going to get resistance stuff's going to get hot and melt and uh, that'll that'll um, stop the machine welding like it should but anyway um, yeah thanks for watching and please subscribe hopefully this was helpful to you